Back in the 70s, I worked for one of London's top hi-fi dealers, so I could watch from the front line the birth, short life and the death of the quadraphonic LP. Now, it only lasted five years, from its launch in 71 to its demise around 76, but it did have a huge impact and paved the way for surrounding the cinema. Now, I've got a handful of the quad albums from my record collection, and they covered every possible type of music, obviously from rock to various varieties of classical. Now, they're presented, some of them, in these fantastic covers that really shouted about the fact they're quadraphonic. But others were a lot more subtle, and you would hardly know that it was quadraphonic at all unless you looked very carefully. So here's what a quadraphonic LP looks like. Well, it's exactly the same as a stereo LP and playable, as it says on the cover, on any record player. The trick was to encode four channels into the stereo groove using matrixing, which was a way of using the level and phase differences between the front left and right and the back left and right to encode the four channels down to two, and then use a decoder in the hi-fi system to get back the four channels. All the basics were laid out on the inner sleeves. It tells you all about the startling listening experience, that SQ discs would play on any system, and that it is here and now. The back of the sleeve tells you as much of the basic technology as a general hi-fi buff needed to know then about the inside working of SQ. The principles of matrixing were originally presented in a technical paper in the late 60s, by an engineer called Peter Scheiber. That was picked up as the next best thing by the hi-fi industry, which was huge then. Two of the three major formats were matrix systems. SQ, standing for Stereo Quadraphonic, was launched by Sony making the hi-fi systems, and with Columbia, CBS, Virgin, EMI and Epic, amongst others, launching the SQ LPs. That is not to be confused with QS, Quadraphonic Sound, which was launched by Sansui, who had made the hardware, with the label support mainly from Decca, Warner, MCA, Elektra, and a few others. As Quadraphonic hit the streets in 1971 and into 72, the format inventors, Sony, Sansui, and JVC, came onto the scene with a rush of hardware. Other big bands at the time quickly joined in, and Marantz, Akai, HK, Sanyo, Pioneer and Fisher all launched quad hi-fi components. It also all looked good, especially the quadraphonic receivers. They were big and shiny, and often had space for a joystick to balance the sound around the room. And for the Super Deluxe, there was a small cathode ray scope to watch the signal flashing around. Then there is this third format, CD4, which used a high frequency modulation system and gave true discrete 4 channel. The hi fis were made by JVC, with their parent record labels RCA, joined by Atlantic, Electra, Reprise and a few others, providing the titles. Finally, add a normal turntable and cartridge, and of course four big speakers, and you've got a quadraphonic hi-fi system to impress all your friends. The limitation with SQ and QS matrix formats was the relatively small separation between the channels. But as it happens, at around the same time, analog audio processor chips started coming off the chip manufacturers' lines with a vengeance. The quad business was big enough for companies like Motorola to make logic decoder chips for SQ and QS, and they could magically improve the separation between channels. SQ and QS logic dramatically improved channel separation, and so high-quality matrix quadraphonic rarely got off the ground. With its CD4 format, JVC bypassed all of these problems. Technically, CD4 was very good, and it was rated very highly by the reviewers at the time. But it needed very special cartridges with a specially shaped stylus to pull that signal off the LP properly and without wearing away the carrier. 
Not surprisingly, as it also had less hardware music support, CD4 didn't really gain much of a share of the quad market. So much for the hardware. So what about the music? Considering how short-lived Quad was, there was a lot of albums released, maybe 3,000 or more, so there was no shortage of music. The albums themselves were a mix of existing releases remastered for sound, but a lot were also mixed in Quad at the same time as their stereo release, albums like Dark Side of the Moon and Tubular Bells. The big names were certainly there. Here's Johnny Cash, Simon and Garfunkel, Mike Oldfield, Walter, now Wendy, Carlos, a mass of classical, and even John Lennon, so it didn't get much bigger than that. The downside of having three formats is it would be quite likely that some of the albums you wanted were on the labels which supported the other format to the one you bought on your hi-fi system. Quadraphonic burned brightly, but just for five years. So, what did it in for Quad? Was it the incompatible formats? Well, that didn't help. But if people really wanted Quad, then Universal Decoders would have appeared in quantity. So I don't think it was that. Was it the need for four large speakers? Well, that certainly was a bit of a killer. You couldn't get the small, powerful, high-quality speakers you have now. So fitting four big speakers in a stylish 1970s lounge was only going to be allowed for a while. But I believe the real killers were things outside of audio. At the start of the 70s, hi-fi was one of the few things that you could spend your youthful cash on. But then there were all sorts of new distractions. Movies re-emerged, Star Wars started that trend, and the young hi-fi nut found the joys of discos to spend their time and money in. And if you really wanted some new technology to show off at home, you bought one of those new fangled video cassette recorders. So, just a couple of I didn't know that things about quadraphonics to finish off with. The 1976 movie of The Who's Tommy was the first to be released in Matrix Surround. It used QS encoding on its 70mm release. And for those learned in the classics, they'll always wince at the words we've been using, as it's a mix of Latin and Greek. To the purest, it should be something like tetraphonic, if you're sticking to the Greek, or quadrasonic, if your preference is for Latin. But all the marketing men wanted was a word that sounded as good as they thought their systems did. I've been Tim Foss, and if you enjoyed this, give it a like, and feel free to comment on it, and of course, subscribe, as there's a lot more coming on Vintage Audio where this came from, including on how you can extract SQ from a quad LP and put it on a DVD, all using just your PC.